Hi, Professor Groundland here with a little review for the Fluid Exchange Lab. During our first lab period, we simulated an infectious disease being transmitted to members of the class. Initially, one student was infected, and after exchanging simulated body fluids with other members of the class, more and more students became infected. The results were similar to the ones shown here. Individual 9 was initially the only person infected, but after continuous exchange of fluids between students, most of the class had become infected. These results are then used to explain and calculate incidence and prevalence. The incidence is the number of new cases of a disease in a defined population during a specified time. This number helps us determine how quickly an infection is spreading. The calculation is number of new cases in during that specified time period divided by the size of the population at the midpoint of the time period. Sometimes incidence and prevalence is reported as a percent. For example, if you go to the Montgomery County COVID-19 website, it will give you the numbers in a percent of the county population. Most often, epidemiologists were reported as a rate. This is done by multiplying the answer by a power of 10 to get a number greater than 1. For example, instead of the incidence being reported as 0 0.006 cases, we would actually move the decimal place three places and report it as six new cases per 1,000 people in the population. Okay, now you try it. Suppose that you made a calculation and your answer was 0 0.0356. How would you report that as a rate? Hopefully, you multiplied by 100 and reported it as 3.56 in 100 people. Let's try these calculations using data from our simulation. What's the incidence for week 4? Week 4 is row D, so we're looking for new infections in that row. Is person 1 newly infected? No. Is person 2 newly infected? Yes. Go through the entire row. You should see two new infections, persons 2 and 13. Therefore, the calculation is 2 divided by 24 equals 0 0.0823, or 8.23 people in 100 people. By calculating the incidence for the up outbreak, an epidemiologist can quickly determine if a disease is still spreading. Another really useful number is prevalence. Prevalence is the total number of cases during a given time period in that given population. It's important for an epidemiologist to know how common a disease is within a population. So the prevalence rate is the total number of cases during that specified time divided by the size of the population. Let's try that calculation with our simulation. What's the prevalence for week six? Week six is row F. We were told that that disease lasts one week and we should consider an individual ill the week that they come down with it and the following week only. So if we're looking at row F, would person one be counted as ill? Yes. Would person two be counted as ill? No. Now if you're thinking that they would be counted, you have to remember that we're asked only who's sick during that week. We're told that they're sick the week they get it. For this person, that would have been week four. And the following week, that would be week five for person two. But now after that, they don't have the, they're not ill anymore. So they don't get counted as being ill during week six. How about person three? Yes. Okay, hit pause on the video. Count the number of people you think are sick during week six. Did you come up with 10? Then the calculation is 10 divided by 24 or 
0.417, which we multiply by 10 and report as 4.17 in 10 people. Okay, time for you to try it on your own. Hit the pause on the video and calculate the prevalence in week three. If you came up with 1.67 in 10 people, well done. If not, you better try that again. Contact me if you have questions.